This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Let's go through and have a look at the world of small and medium sized entities and how small and medium sized entities go through and apply IFRSs because IFRSs are very cumbersome, they're very complex, and there are a lot of rules and complexities surrounding them. Now, if you think about small and medium sized entities, just because they're small, just because they're medium, doesn't mean to say that they are not important. They are vitally important to drive any economy because ultimately a small or medium sized entity will become a larger entity and will ultimately become listed, hopefully at some point in the future, and therefore generate more profits, create more wealth for the economy through taxes, create more jobs, and then further increase wealth through the taxes generated from employment. So, Small and medium sized entities should not be confused with being not important. However, in order to, to get them on the path to success and to grow bigger and become more international, we don't want to overburden them with too much accounting regulation in their early days. Because if we do that, then they'll spend more time focusing on getting the accounts correct then managing the business and looking at the future, looking at the business's strategy and how they can improve the strategy and improve the value of the business going forward. So what we've decided to do on the international rules is we've tried to simplify the accounting for small and medium sized entities. Now, even though it says small and medium sized entities, some of the small and medium sized entities by definition can actually be quite large but they meet the small and medium sized entity as per the criteria here within your IFRSs for SMEs. So first of all, let's think about what we have with regards to your small and medium sized entity. What do we look at internationally as SMEs? Well, SMEs essentially are businesses that do not have public accountability. So let's think about which businesses have public accountability. Listed companies, banks, insurance companies, they all have public accountability, don't they? So therefore, companies that do not have public accountability will be unlisted businesses and non-financial institutions. Okay. So banks have to follow IFRSs. Financial insurance institutions have to follow IFRSs. Listed companies have to follow IFRSs. But if you're unlisted or a non-financial institution, you do not have to follow the full-blown set of IFRSs. However, there could be some quite large unlisted businesses. Uh, in the UK, we have some uh, smaller discount retailers. Uh, you may have heard if you're in the UK, such as B&M Bargains, Home Bargains, Wilkinson's. Uh, if you've ever been to an airport in the UK, I'm sure you've seen Virgin Atlantic. Uh, Virgin Atlantic is part of the Virgin Group. And the Virgin Group is pretty large, but it's not listed. So by definition, it's an IFRS. No, sorry, it is an SME. So therefore, or could follow IFRSs for SMEs. But it's pretty large. So you know, just because it's defined as an SME doesn't necessarily mean that it is small or me medium. It could actually be quite large. However, they still have the choice if they want to go through there and adopt IFRSs if they so wish. It's not therefore mandatory. But if they want, they can adopt more simplified standards in IFRSs for SME. So when we thought about this as an issue, what were the options? Well, one option was to totally go through and rewrite a new set of IFRSs. So you've got all your IFRSs. You could write out some new IFRSs that are then more simplified. OK. Uh, the other alternative would have been to take the IFRSs and then at the end of each IFRS, just go through there and list out what SMEs should do as opposed to following the full rules. Or what was finally decided upon was to say, well, look, there's the IFRSs. Let's create a new accounting standard. So IFRSs for SMEs, as it says there, is a self-contained accounting standard. It exists by itself. And it's designed to be more simplified than your full IFRSs. And all it goes through and does is essentially it has a, a more condensed version 
uh, in one accounting standard. Okay, which makes it much, much, much more simplified. Okay, uh, how does it go through? If you like, and make it less complex. Uh, well, what you've got there is it removes anything that's not relevant. So earnings per share isn't relevant for an unlisted business. Uh, interim financial reporting is not relevant for an unlisted business. And segment reporting, again, is not considered relevant for an unlisted business. Uh, again, what we go through and do as well is we go through there and simplify the IFRSs. So when we look at the detail in a moment, the simplification is trying to take away the options that you have with regards to accounting standards and keep them as straightforward as possible. Likewise as well, uh, fewer disclosures. Uh, similarly as well, uh, it's written in clear easily translatable language you could argue with that one i do think that ifrs is are quite clear and easily translatable but, but there we go uh, and then what we have there is that the revisions are much less regular okay so we're not expected to update ifrs for smes as regularly as what we would with your full-blown ifrs okay uh, so what we've got just a couple of examples with regards to what you see within that standard IFRS is for SMEs. So what we have there is most of them refer to your assets. That's where the simplicity arises. So in property, plant and equipment, under IFRS, you have a choice of the cost versus the revaluation model. Here, it's just a cost model only. Uh, in tangibles, under IFRS, you expense research and you must capitalise development. Here, you expense research and development which makes it much easier doesn't it than having to determine oh i don't know uh, when, when are we going to start capitalizing when are we not by, by the time you decided to capitalize the project's finished okay and then everyone's moved on and they're developing new products uh investment property uh fair value model only uh, again keeping it simpler as opposed to having a choice of the two uh borrowing costs under ifrs you must capitalize that's complicated, isn't it? Well, I'll make it simple. Don't bother capitalising it. Expense to borrowings as incurred. And then with your business combinations, when you're thinking about your goodwill, again, would this be relevant so much for some of the smaller SMEs? Maybe not because they're not yet acquiring other entities and gaining control. But for some of the larger SMEs who are beginning to expand and gain control of subsidiaries, and if they're not following full IFRSs, we use your partial goodwill, so your proportionate share of net assets, and then we just amortize it over the 10 years. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Uh, so try and remember most of those there uh, because you can then supplement that in any potential answer to a question. A long time ago, this was a current issues question. So I would recommend that you attempt that current issues question or at least read it through to go through there and get a, a thorough understanding of this separate IFRS for SME standard, so that if it were to crop up again within any question, it wouldn't be a current issues question again, it would feed into question two or question three. Then if that's the case, you have every chance of being able to score well upon it. There we go. That's it for IFRSs for SMEs. Have a go, as I said, at that past exam question. Other than that, I'll see you all within the next session.